Yum, yum. Floyd here with a quick look at my five favorite features in plasticity. My personal favorite feature is the isoparam tool, which enables you to quickly add horizontal and vertical edges to faces. Simply use the keyboard shortcut Control R, then place your cursor over the faces you'd like to edit. Pressing the tab key will toggle between vertical and horizontal. Right click to commit. Another handy feature is the match face command, which enables you to replace the surface of one face with the surface of another. Simply select the face, click the match face icon, click the face you'd like to match, then right click to commit. The place and align command lets you quickly duplicate and place solids onto the surface of another solid, which can be a massive time saver. A must have command in your toolkit is the alternate duplicate. Simply select the faces you'd like to work with, press Alt D, and a new solid will be created based on the selection. New to my list of favorites is the raise degree command, which converts a planar surface to a spline surface. Simply select the planar face, use the keyboard shortcut Shift S as many times as you'd like, then edit the control points to generate a more organic surface with ease. Experiment with these amazing tools and see how they can help you improve asset creation and plasticity. I'd love to hear what some of your favorite plasticity features are, so drop a comment and let me know. Floyd here with a quick look at accessing the console in Plasticity, which is primarily used for debugging purposes. To open the console, simply use the keyboard shortcut Control shift i The console will appear on the right side of the UI. You can close the console using the same keyboard shortcut. Floyd here with a quick look at the Add Current Selection to Group command in Plasticity. To quickly place the currently selected items into a specific group, right-click on the group in the outliner and select Add Current Selection to the group. All selected items will be moved to that group. Use this handy command to quickly organize the outliner in plasticity. Floyd here with a quick look at adding ridges to a cylinder in plasticity. Start by using the keyboard shortcut Control R to activate the isoparam tool. Press tab to change the direction of the cut. Hold the shift key and use the mouse wheel to increase the number of cuts. Then click to commit. Select every other face and offset the faces either in or out to generate the ridges. Use this simple process to quickly add ridges to your assets. Floyd here with a quick look at the check command in Plasticity, which will print in the console any corruption in a mesh. Start by opening the console by using the keyboard shortcut Control shift i then press F and run the check command. You can view the results of the check command in the console. Add this command to your toolkit for debugging purposes. Floyd here with a quick look at converting a subdivided surface to an unsubdivided surface in Plasticity. If you use the raise degree command to subdivide the surface, and convert a planar surface to a spline surface, and would like to convert it to an unsubdivided surface either before or after editing, simply delete the surface and use the patch holes command to rebuild it. Floyd here with a quick look at converting vertices to control vertices in plasticity. To convert a vertex to a control point, select it, then use the convert vertex command, or simply double click on it to convert it. Floyd here with a quick look at converting a control point to a corner point in plasticity. Start by creating a new line curve from the control point you'd like to edit, then use the split curve tool to add a new point, snap the point into position, and then remove the extra control points as well as the line curve. Floyd here with a quick look at the dimension command in Plasticity, which enables you to modify dimension values such as the size of a rectangle curve or the diameter of a cylinder. To you, simply select the object you want to change the dimension of, activate the dimension command, enter the dimension values you'd like to use, and press enter to confirm. Add this handy command to your toolkit to speed up asset creation and plasticity. Floyd here with a quick look at disabling specific snaps and plasticity. While grid and object snaps can be extremely useful when creating new items, sometimes specific element snaps can be annoying and get in the way. Placing your cursor over those elements and using the keyboard shortcut Shift X will enable you to disable that element snapping. Use this handy command to enhance asset creation and plasticity. Floyd here with a quick look at the Extend Sheet to Target Body feature in Plasticity, which will extend a sheet up to and intersecting the target body. To you, select an edge and extend it. With the Extend Sheet still active, left-click the body you'd like to match. Add this handy feature to your toolkit to speed up asset creation in Plasticity. Floyd here with a quick look at the Full Round Fillet feature in Plasticity, which generates a surface that's tangential on all three faces. To you, select the edges you'd like to fill it, adjust the distance, then choose Full for the Shape attribute. Add this powerful option to your workflow to speed up asset creation and plasticity. Floyd here with a quick look at Hierarchical Isolation and Plasticity, which enables you to step back through multiple layers of isolation. In this example, I'll isolate these three objects, then these two, 
than this single object. The level of isolation is displayed on the screen and clicking on it enables you to step back through the stages of isolation with each click. Add this to your workflow to enhance asset creation and plasticity. Floyd here with a quick look at the measure tool in plasticity, which enables you to display dimension values, such as the size of a rectangle curve or the diameter of a cylinder. To use, simply activate the tool, select the curve, edge, or points you want to measure, then move the cursor. Left click to confirm. A new item will be created and added to the outliner. Use this handy tool to quickly add dimension values to your assets in plasticity. Floyd here with a quick look at moving the command dialog to the cursor in plasticity. To save screen travel, use the keyboard shortcut Shift Tab to move the command dialog to the current location of the cursor. Moving the cursor off the command dialog will move it back to the original location in the UI. Use this handy shortcut key to work faster in plasticity. Floyd here with a quick look at the offset vertex command in plasticity, which enables you to insert new vertices along a curve on both sides of a selected vertex. To you, simply select the vertices you'd like to offset, press F, then select offset vertex from the list. Move your cursor to adjust the distance, left click to set the distance, then right click to commit. A new vert will be added on both sides of all selected verts. Floyd here with a quick look at the dependent offset feature in plasticity which will replace the selected surface with another surface when using the offset command. To use, select the face and give it an offset. With offset face still active, left click the face you'd like to match. The result will be like the result when using the match face command. The offset face gizmo will still be available, enabling you to perform another offset. Add this handy feature to your toolkit to speed up asset creation and plasticity. Floyd here with a quick tip for group material assignment and plasticity. When a material is assigned to a group in the outliner, any objects dropped in the group will be assigned the group material. Any new objects created with duplication or mirroring will be automatically placed in the group and assigned the group material. Take advantage of this handy feature to speed up material assignment and plasticity. Floyd here with a quick tip for controlling which end of a pipe is tapered when using the pipe tool in plasticity. When using the scale attribute for the pipe tool, the end of the curve is scaled, producing a taper effect on the pipe. While there's no invert option, you can simply edit the section size attribute and adjust the scale to achieve a taper on the opposite end of the curve. Use this simple workflow to control which end of the pipe gets tapered. Floyd here with a quick look at the scale attribute for the pipe command in plasticity, which enables you to taper the section size along the length of a pipe. To use, select a curve, press P to activate the pipe tool, adjust the diameter of the pipe, then enable the scale attribute and adjust its value to your liking, and you're all set. Use this handy feature to taper the diameter of pipes in plasticity. Floyd here with a quick look at the raise degree command in plasticity, which converts a planar surface to a spline surface. To use, select a face and then run the raise degree command. The planar face will be converted to a one by one spline and you can continue to run the command to generate additional control points. These control points can be selected and edited to easily create a more organic surface. If you'd like to hide the control points, select the face, press F, then select toggle points. Use the toggle points command again to make the control points visible. Add these powerful options to your workflow to enhance asset creation and plasticity. Floyd here with a quick look at the rebuild edge command in plasticity, which replaces the geometry of a chain of smoothly connected edges with a spline that closely fits the original edge. In this example, I'd like these two edges to be one clean edge. If I run delete redundant topology, the result will still be two edges. But if I select the two edges, and use the rebuild edge command, then use the delete redundant topology command, I get a single clean edge. Add this handy command to your toolkit to help clean up edges in plasticity. Floyd here with a quick look at the reload command in plasticity, which closes and opens the software. If you run into any issues while working in plasticity and would like to quickly close the software and reload it, simply use the keyboard shortcut Control Shift R. Use this handy command to quickly close and reopen plasticity. Floyd here with a quick look at the Remove Nominal Surface command in Plasticity, which displays the additional spans that are automatically generated to not leave holes in a body when working with nominal surfaces. In this example, I'll use the Raise Degree command on this face to convert it to a spline surface. If I select these control points and scale them down, no hole is created because additional spans are generated behind the scenes to avoid creating a hole. In most cases, there's no reason to view the extra spans, but when problem solving, you might want to have a look at them. To do this, use the remove nominal surface command. To hide them again, simply use the undo command. 
Add this command to your toolkit to aid in problem solving nominal surfaces and plasticity. Floyd here with a quick tip for scrolling custom matcap thumbnails and plasticity. If you have more than four custom matcaps, you can use the small slider to access them. Another option is to place your cursor over the custom matcaps row, press and hold the shift key, and use the mouse wheel. Give both options a try and see what works best for you. Floyd here with a quick look at the tangent arc tool in plasticity, which enables you to create an arc tangent to a curve. Start by activating the tangent arc tool, click the curve that you want the arc to be tangent to, and move the cursor to define the size of the arc, then left click to commit. Use this handy tool to enhance arc creation and plasticity. Floyd here with a quick look at wrapping text around a cylinder and plasticity. Start by selecting the face on the cylinder you'd like to place the text, then press F and run the unwrap face command. Two template curves representing the bounding area will be created. Generate the text you'd like to work with and place it within the bounds of the unwrapped template curves. Select the text and the template curves, as well as the face on the cylinder, and run the wrap face command. Select and extrude the new faces, and you're all set. Floyd here with a quick tip when using the wrap command in plasticity. When using the wrap command, it's important to take note of the scale, placement, and orientation of the curves you want to wrap in relation to the bounding area of the unwrapped template curves. If the shape of the curves gets stretched, or you simply don't like the results, undo the operation, adjust the curves, and run the wrap command again. Repeat these steps until you're happy with the results. After a little bit of experimentation, you'll quickly have a better idea of what the end result will be and will be able to achieve the look you're after much faster. Oh, look at the time. Meow. Yum, yum!